Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. The topic this time is organizational change and innovation. Now there are many areas in an organization where this change can take place uh, and quite often we'll be looking at organizational structure and design. Um, and there are several different areas here that we could have changed and might happen quite frequently. Uh, the one that we're going to see the most probably is job design. Quite often when things aren't going well for a company or they feel like something could be improved in some way, they're going to start looking at the basic jobs of the company and uh, defining those jobs duties and so forth and making sure that they're really getting the most efficiency that they can. Now most of the time we like to do plan change. We don't like to be caught unprepared or by the unexpected, but things aren't always the way we'd like. Um, when we do have to do some change, and we do plan it, um, quite often we should be thinking of Lewin's model of change. Now this is a three-step model. It's a basic way to look at the process of change in any given organization. Uh, it starts first by unfreezing attitudes. Um, and since it's the first step, we have to spend the most time with it. This means a lot of con communication. This means the involvement of top management as well as those at the bottom. And the idea here is that you have to convey to everyone involved the significance of the change, why it has to be done, uh, and what each person's particular role in that will be. Uh, the unfreezing stage is followed by the implementation stage. You've unfrozen attitudes and thinking, and now you implement the plan that you've come up with. And you follow that plan for a while. You do your management function. You control. You gather information and feedback, and you assess how you're doing over time. When you're satisfied that things are working the way that you want, then you get to the third stage of the freezing model, which is refreeze. And the idea here is that we let everyone know we've reached our goal, that we have made a successful change, and now that change is going to be the new status quo. It gives an organization a particularly good way to start over. Uh, it, so to speak, gives them a clean slate. But that's what plan change. We also have a lot of unexpected events, and we have to react to those as they happen. When that happens, um, we have to be paying attention to the environment, hoping that we're somewhat prepared. Generally, this type of change comes out of the general environment and involves factors that are much less under our control. Um, things that come out of the economic sphere, the technological sphere, and the sociocultural sphere. If we're paying attention to the environment, we shouldn't be caught blindsided, but even so, Quite often, these things come out of the general environment and cause us to react in some way. Uh, but this is the way innovation works. Companies that promote innovation uh, generally do better in the marketplace. And it doesn't matter if you're a large company or a small company, uh, innovation is incredibly important. You're always wanting to have new ideas, better ways of doing things, better ways to become more efficient, and creative ideas sometimes can lead to a new product, uh, it could lead to a patent on something, or simply help you determine that distinctive competency you need to outdo the, compensation, uh, the competition. So we do have innovation, and innovation does lead to new products and services. When we look at innovation in particular, we have to say, is this a radical innovation or is this an incremental increment, uh, innovation? Now, incremental innovations are those things that we're kind of used to. We see them quite often in products. And the best example, really, uh, a good one is the toaster. The toaster was originally out with a couple of slots for bread, and we all made toast with it. But as tastes change, uh, we suddenly realized that people are eating a lot of bagels and we need a bigger slot for bagels. And so the toaster, uh, a small little revision and innovation in the product, and we have a wider slot now for bagels. And then we began to innovate in other ways in this basic household product. Uh, we add temperature controls of different types. We can now defrost something that's been frozen and so forth. So that's incremental innovation, taking an existing product or service and bettering it, making it more efficient in some way, or trying to do that to appeal for a, a different or a new set of, of consumers out there. But we also have what's known as radical innovation. Radical innovation is much more dramatic because when we have a radical innovation, it is something that changes the landscape forever, that alters the way we're doing things forever. 
And so we have to look to significant inventions to really understand this concept of radical innovation. Uh, it's not a small revision or a tweaking of some existing process or of a product. It's something that really does change the way we do things. So think of things like the printing press, for example. When we were able to print the first books, this brought education and literacy to the common person. So this changed the landscape forever. And so you would have to say that the printing press is a great example of an innovation that is radical in nature. And there are others, and think of substantial innovations of the past. The telephone is a radical innovation in communication. Just think of it, uh, before the telephone we had the telegraph. And the telegraph, people could only understand those signals if you were trained in Morse code and so forth, and you had the time and the setup to do it. But certainly something like that is not going to be in every household. But the telephone did change the landscape of communications. Um, and other things as well, when you think about it, simple things that really do alter the way we do life in general. So the typewriter would be another one, the founding of the internet, uh, and so forth. Things like that are radical innovations. You would hope in most organizations that you could come up with something like that. Um, however, most of the time in the business world, we're dealing with plan change. Uh, unless we have a pretty robust R&D department, which many organizations do not, uh, you're just simply not going to get that level of innovation. That's all for this time. Thank you, folks.